Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Happy Hour. We are here. We're here, and it's very happy. It's the happiest <laughs> happy hour so far. It's, it's a great happiest start. hour. <laughs> we got a, a good friend with us, uh, John Kraus, the infamous rocket photographer guy. Um, <laughs> and, and he's provided us so much entertainment already in one minute of this show. Um, yep. Because uh, uh, we had we had a whole a whole drama about getting a drink ahead of this, mm -hmm. and uh, it was it was really entertaining. It's good content. Yeah, it was, it was great good content, content that we're, we, we you didn't get to see. <laughs> that was a personal show for two of us, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no, was great. So uh, we tracked it down, welcome. John. We finally tracked yeah. it down. Yeah, I uh, found. It's weird. Like I I have a lot of free time, but I never know when the free time is. So. <laughs> To actually like line it up with someone else's schedule is rare, but I'm glad we finally did it. <laughs> it only took like uh, 22 years. <laughs> Approximately, give or take. Uh, Jake, I forget where we started last week. Do we have a format for the show yet? I don't think we really do yet. It's still pretty new. We just kind of stumble into it like we do every other off nominal show and see nice. where it takes us. Yeah. Um, I guess we could start with drinks. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Well, you, did you make up something fancy again? I did. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm continuing to embark on my journey of uh, of exploring new cocktails. So I made a mai tai today, which I'm sure anyone has heard of. Uh, I have my same old metallic ice cubes here, but this is a special mai tai. It's a uh, Chiapas style mai tai, which Chiapas is a state here in Mexico, and it's called that because uh, instead of the um, the normal uh, uh, alcohol that you put in this, which I'm blanking now, what, what is the normal one? What's the main alcohol in a Mai Tai? If you remember, let me know. But I, uh, I swapped it out, I swapped it out for this. So this is, um, it's called Posh. Uh, you can see, where's the name? Yeah, right in there. So P P O X Posh. And this is actually a like oh, traditional... That's where the letters are. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, I know. did not know what you were pointing at there. <laughs> There's a lot going on there, P O X. Uh, this is like a, a traditional ancestral Mayan alcohol. So this is like what the Maya drank. It's made from corn, like everything in their diet was. Um, and it's just like, so it's just distilled corn. It's like if you if you had to make whiskey, but you only had corn, this is what you get. Um, and so they drank it like for ceremonies and really special events. But now it's like starting to take off as like a really, a very posh drink, mm, if you will. That's the name. Um, yeah. And so they make it a lot of it in Chiapas, which is uh, south of here. And I made a Mai Tai out of it. So that's what I have today. It's pretty fun. You're all about the fancy life. How much yeah, How much it, prep do you do on like what you're going to drink? I have to do a little bit of prep because I'm yeah. still building up like my Oh, right. You're in the project to build out a liquor right? cabinet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But now John, I've got, John I... how much prep did you do to figure out what you were drinking? <laughs> um, well, you know, because I was so cognizant of the fact that this was called Happy Hour, I put a lot of time into figuring out my drink by hopping on the live and then going to our <laughs> cabinet of drinks and realizing that my drink of choice was not there. And then, you know, very deep journey into the cabinet, uh, was able to find this blue liqueur, if I'm even saying that right. I don't really know what this is. Um, some people in the household were saying that it was something that you mix with other things, but we don't really have anything to mix it with. So I'm drinking <laughs> this. This could be like cough medicine spiked with alcohol or something. I don't really know, but um, it's not awful. It's not really good, but it's... <laughs> It's happy hour and I'm here and I have a drink, so I, I can't complain. It totally Excellent. looks like a thing that you would get like in a sci-fi movie at a bar on an yes. asteroid, mm -hmm. right? Like, cause it has <laughs> to look weird. So let's make it bright blue. Like it definitely has exactly. that vibe to it. Somewhere in Epcot that probably exists. Served sure. to you by For a sure. Twi'lek, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Poured with like the, you know, low gravity effects and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, cool, I dig yeah. it. I have, I'm, I have a box of wine. Wow. I have black box. This stuff's actually kind of tasty for being boxed wine. But it was open, and I was like, I should probably drink the open stuff. Because it's that okay. time of the year that we generally yeah. have a box of wine open. Which means, like, you're, <laughs> you're prepping for a lot of wine drinking. So Yeah. That's when what you, I got. And you buy it in bulk. Yeah. <laughs> Vacuum sealed, so it's, like, spacey, you know? <laughs> counts. Okay. I like it. Yeah, that's, it I like the tenuous space connection. Yeah. Thanks. I need a tenuous space connection too. Then I guess, uh, 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 well, Maya were pretty good, pretty good astronomers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Always go to Chicxulub. 
We have a thin blue line, and this is a, a blue drink. So, you know, I put a lot of thought into that one. Just saying. <laughs> really good. It's blue, yeah. Something about Blue Origin joke. Blue uh, Origin. Yeah, uh, both my both my drink and New Shepherd are suborbital. There it is. There it is. It was that yeah, easy. Yeah. Uh, both your drink and New Glenn are in Florida? Um, I guess so, but my drink isn't a Pathfinder. It's It's real. It's a real oh. thing. <laughs> All right, we should we should nip those in the bud because I could <sighs> I could go pretty far with these. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, uh, so where, where do we start, Anthony? Do you Anthony's got news this episode? Anthony, do you want to do the news now, or do you want to save it and like savor it right to the end and keep everybody right on the rope? What do you think? No, no, I'm gonna do the news now. You're gonna nip because, it off. Okay. Yeah. Next week okay. we're gonna talk at length about this. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. But, Jake, a couple years ago, you uh, made some life changes mm -hmm. and did a whole thing, going pro, quit your job, eventually moved to Mexico. I did, yeah. I'm doing at least one of those. At least one of those things. And uh, it does not involve moving to Mexico, <laughs> but I am quitting the day job and going yes. to join Jake in the full-time independent podcaster world. We are going to confirm our position in the back of the Kennedy Space Center <laughs> yeah. press room, the independent <laughs> podcaster section now, full time. I need full time back there, man. I need yeah, to hold exactly. Down the floor. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be able to say that we are a full time. We belong on the back yeah. wall in the floor. Full time so, YouTubers or something, I think is what we can say now, right? <laughs> yeah, we are officially YouTubers, much to the chagrin of many of our fans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're going to talk a lot more about this next week. We're going to talk about plans for 2022, probably even crack into a little bit of like why we're doing things the way we are with happy hour. Uh, mm, yeah. So we're going to table that. It's happening next week. So next week's happy hour will be like, I've just finished work and that's it. Now I'm, this is my life now. We're so, going to finish that box of wine. We're going to yeah. finish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the whole, it's like four <laughs> bottles worth of wine in these suckers too. <laughs> so that'll be good. So that's the news. It's big time. I mean, I'm pumped. I'm really excited. Really for you, excited. Man. I'm so excited for you. Yeah. So. Yeah. So think of your uh, awesome. lessons for me next week, Jake. I will. I'll think of many lessons. Yeah. Mostly, I'm just excited that when I message you in the middle of the day now, I won't be interrupting anything that isn't uh, that is more important than me. That's exactly. You take precedence now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. All right. Cool. So that's it. That's the news. That's the news. Everybody thought I was having a I second a... kid, but not yeah. that. I have a total plug for you guys that's like not even related to me, but um, have you guys heard of Colin and Samir on YouTube? Nope. Colin they're like a they're a duo of creators that like have a history of being creators on YouTube, but they've kind of shifted their focus to like meta videos about creators. And I think that you guys could probably find some cool inspiration or guidance hmm. about being creators in 2021, at least for the next three weeks, then it'd be 2022. But um <laughs> Um, they have and it cool all channel. changes. I, I, it's totally different. Though. Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different space. Uh, but either way, like if you guys wanted to look at the channel, um, I've definitely found some cool like inspiration from from that. So uh, hmm. worth worth looking into. And it I don't sounds really relevant. Like, we like talking inside I baseball. I don't really like plug a lot of non space people, so I, it's definitely like something. <laughs> it's a that special I, one. Congrats! Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and I don't know them. They don't know me. So like it, it's it's very not paid. It's very not paid. But, uh, <laughs> John's coming on here making kickbacks off of his plugs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys can you guys can send the check. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> bring the bring the real yeah. alcohol for yeah. that. <laughs> All right, you that's my news out of the way. It has a weird code at the end of it too. Is that what you want? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, oh. what should we get to first here? We got we've got the the man of the hour here, mm -hmm. just finishing off. I mean, maybe you're still got some lingering inspiration for stuff, but I feel like that's been a major part of your life for months how long was that like i was when did you join on officially there so yeah can, can we hear the story of how you got on to because i think there's some fun stuff behind that absolutely so it was um i think february 1st or 2nd that they announced publicly that inspiration 4 was going to be a thing and it immediately caught my interest both because it was like really cool that there was going to be a civilian like private space flight outside the realm of nasa on dragon but also because two of the seats were open to the general public by way of donating to St. Jude or starting an online e-commerce store with Jared Isaacman's company, uh, Shift4Shop, or Shift4Shop as a part of Shift4. 
And I'm like, this is perfect. They're looking for an entrepreneur to share their story and like sell products on the store. And I immediately got to work on like a campaign to try to win the seat. And I started selling signed prints on the store and I made a whole like Twitter campaign about it. And I started shipping off like 75 prints. And I think like raised about $9,500 for St. Jude as a part of that effort. I, I realized pretty quickly, like if I'm gonna both like morally and like kind of practically, if I wanted to win this, like the profit should be going to St. Jude. So uh, sold 75 prints, raised a, a good a chunk of change for St. Jude. And I had to release like a Twitter video as a part of this contest, which that was like a real nagging thing in the back of my mind for this whole campaign. Like the print sale was kind of like a full-time thing for a good two weeks because, you know, taking all the orders, um, ordering the prints. And like, I had a couple of problems with defects um, of the prints and I was not happy shipping out signed products that were rather expensive and being donated to charity if there were like problems with the prints. <laughs> so it, it was kind of stressful to like get those all shipped out. But um, as a part of that, I had to make this Twitter video and and looking back at it, my video was pretty bad. Like it was um, it was pretty straightforward. It was just a talking head into a camera. And I think it made it genuine in that it was just me like talking to a camera, telling my story. I didn't really try to make myself out for anything more than I am. Like I'm just a guy that started taking pictures as a teenager and, and has since turned into a career like you know, I'm lucky to do some cool things, but it's not like this. It didn't really need fabricated. It was just me telling my story. Um, but the audio was bad. There were weird cuts. I think my voice cracked once, but I'm like, I'm getting this done in one day. I'm not doing too many takes. Like, it's I need it done. So um, I ended up not winning the contest, if you didn't know, because I didn't go to space. But um, so just the, checking in on that. If you didn't see me in the Netflix, yeah. uh, in, in yeah. the spaceship, in Netflix, in sp then, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> So that seat ended up going to Dr. Cyan Proctor, a geoscience professor, um, amazing human and very kind and, and totally deserving of the seat, way, way more so than I could even come close to considering myself worthy for the seat. Um, she had a great video similar, just, you know, talking straightforward about her life and, and what she does and how she, you know, has turned to space uh, through the lens of art and poetry. And um, she won the seat. She got selected by the independent panel. And then... Um, you know, I think it was like the first week of March, I started hearing chatter that like finalists had been contacted and they had probably chosen a winner. And then I think it was like Sunday the 7th or something, early March, I got an email from the mission director of Inspiration4. His name's Scott Poteet, former Thunderbird pilot, goes by the name of Kid. And he emailed me and he's like, hey, um, are you open to an opportunity with Inspiration4? And at that point, like I was 99% sure I wasn't even a finalist. So I knew I wasn't getting the seat. And I figured like, there's nothing else they could want from me. Like, <laughs> what else could I offer other than like taking pictures for them? Um, so we hopped on a call like two hours later. And um, I didn't know that Jared was going to be on this call. And um, me and kid go back and forth for two minutes. It's really awkward. Because like, I don't really know if we're like waiting on someone or like if he's going to start interviewing me or like what the holdup was. And then he's like, yeah, Jared's hopping on now. I'm like, what? Like the guy? <laughs> you mean like the the guy? Like that guy? And then he's like, he's like, hey, I'm Jared or whatever. And then we just, it was actually really great. We kind of hit it off. We had a really, you know, refreshingly candid conversation that, like, I would say it was. Uh oh, cliffhanger. Very candid. Very candid cliffhanger. conversation. His his uh, blue liquid has spilled onto his laptop. Spilled blue curacao <laughs> on the keyboard, and uh, we no longer have a connection. <laughs> well, we're gonna work the issue here. We'll yeah, see when he comes is, back. This is happening. Anyway, hour. how do you think this story's so, gonna end, Jake? <laughs> well, hmm. he's back. I he's what, back. I wonder what they're gonna ask him. That's a he's really back. good. It's a good question. He's back. Now it says uh, John Two is here with us. John two is with <laughs> Am us. I there? You're back. You're back. <laughs> you're back. You're is you're it, as much okay? latency I'm, I'm as like... like like we're talking to you while you're in Alaska, essentially. But I think it's back enough. Is it? I don't know if he's back. <laughs> right. He's right. Right. Very tentatively here. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna try this real quick. I'm gonna clear out old John. There's new John's calling in. There we go. There we go. Now that there's just one of you, I think it's good. Can I hear you? 
Am I there? Oh, I, uh, yeah, you you're, I'm back. Un- you're back. Everything's back. It's catching up. There. It's catching up. It's fine. All right. Okay. Are we good? Are we live? Yeah. We're live now. We'll do it live. We're live. So you were. It was a very candid conversation. Is where we had a huge cliffhanger. It was so candid that like someone just cut it off without us knowing. Um, anyway, yeah. Sorry, we have a couple people doing stuff on the Wi-Fi, and I don't have Starlink, and my Wi-Fi is bad. So anyway, we had this really nice conversation. It didn't really even feel like an interview. It was just like two people talking about space. Like this wasn't a Starship flight, and within five minutes, we were talking about like SN9, which was like a month prior, and how he watched it and all that. Um, it was really nice, and like I don't even think. I don't remember it exactly, but I don't think we talked too much about what I'd actually be doing. Like there was just, yeah, we want you to follow us and take pictures of the training and we'll try to get you all the great access for the launch and stuff. And like going out of that call, I was like pretty much seemed guaranteed that like I would get the gig. We just needed to schedule or uh, sort out the logistics of everything. And then we hopped on a, another call a couple of days later, me and just kid, the uh, mission director and, and one of the guys from the time team that was working on the documentary and we just had to talk about more of like what I'd be doing and and um, kind of the time allotment that I would need to devote to taking on this project and, and how I could work around and with the time teams. And it was all great. And then I think, you know, two weeks later, like signed the contract. And then a week after that, they, they arrived in Florida all together for the first time. And they went to Kennedy Space Center and I photographed their arrival, photographed them a bit um, at KSC. And then... Uh, like the next day we went straight to Pennsylvania for centrifuge training. Mm. And, and notably didn't call me. Of... No, no problem. Yeah, sorry there. about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> notably. Next time. For sure. <laughs> um, so, and then it was just a whirlwind of like every week to two or three weeks. Like I was traveling somewhere across the country with the team to photograph training. Um, did you realize you know, like in that first points. conversation that, yeah, that everything they were going to have to undergo, like, with, did you, did you have the realization of like, oh, I basically have to train for a space mission and also take photos the whole time? Or was that I would say a no. slow realization? So, <laughs> yeah. So even after the first call and maybe even some of the second call, I thought it would be more of like a, hey, we're going to do these training things and we're going to have like pseudo media events, but we're just going to invite you to them and you're going to take some pictures of us like at the end. And then, like, bye, nice to see you, see you in yeah, a month yeah, yeah. at the next thing. I didn't really think I'd, like, kind of be on the team like I was. Like, I, I traveled with them. I became really good friends with all of them. And I kind of, like, hung around for most of the training. Like, I, it wasn't like a come see us and take 10 minutes of pictures. It was, like, hang out with us for days at a time and, and shoot everything. Like, I shot about 20,000 photos for the campaign. Wow. And um, Did you also yeah, climb the mountain? It, no, I didn't climb the mountain. And I actually okay. regret so it. Um, I, I think know. it was the it was the right choice at the time based on where I am at physically. But I wish I tried. Um, my concern was both that I'm really out of shape and that if I did the climb, I would have to also work while photographing them. And I didn't yeah. think I could do both to a reasonable degree. Um, but I really wish I like tried, and then I could have just chilled out on the mountain and rested and, and photographed them at the top. Um, but I think it was the right choice because I didn't want to like bog down the effort by like having to yeah, have yeah, one yeah. of the guides like bring down the photographer or something. And honestly, like with the conditions that they did the climb in both ways, I don't think I would have been able to do it. So I made the right choice there. But I, I photographed them leaving and coming back, which was like good enough for me from a coverage perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you guys were busy. Like, I think that's the, the thing that struck me the most. It's just like every week there was like a new adventure as part of the training. And I, 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 you must have just been exhausted by the end of it. I don't know. I, I would have been, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I did a lot of thinking about that after it was all over. I don't think I realized how taxing it was until it was over and there wasn't like an imminent event coming up mm-hmm. because it really was like, as soon as something was over, you're like, oh man, in eight days I leave for the next thing. And it's worth noting, like I say that and I didn't even really have to, well, I didn't have to do the training. They actually had to do the training and have the emotional and psychological burden of all this training leading to a space flight. And for me, it just led to like watching my friends go to space. It wasn't, it wasn't personally taxing beyond like I had a lot of travel and had a lot of work to deliver, but it definitely was like for me, a pretty taxing year. Um, I just took my 72nd flight of the year. Um, (laughs) That does, that does include about eight fighter jet flights and a couple private flights. So I think it would be closer to like the high 50s commercial flights. Um, but still, that's a lot of flying. 
and you, I mean, you guys fly probably, you know, like the monotony of getting to the airport hour and a half early waiting. It's delayed, yeah. you know, just stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it seems silly to kind of complain about it, so to speak, but it really was taxing, um, yeah. the travel of it all. And I think I'm at maybe like 80 nights away from home this year, which, which isn't a lot compared to what some of the team did, but it's a lot for me. Cause I'm, I'm still young. I'm still learning what it's like to travel, um, on my own and whatnot and what that means from a packing perspective and, and getting yeah, you're hauling gear that. too um, you know you're you're yeah working through all that so there's logistics that mm-hmm. isn't just like hopping on a flight with a bag of clothes it's yeah more than that exactly you know? and exactly like it, it really did help me tailor my process of like do i really need this lens or in like the off chance that i need this lens like <laughs> right, will right. this other lens be 80 percent as good and is that worth the trade-off and i very quickly found like you don't need to bring five lenses to a one day shoot, you bring your three like ultra wide medium and telephoto and then you're fine. Um, mm. So it was great to kind of learn like more about myself as a photographer. And and I, I've said this a couple times when chatting about the mission, but like it's worth pointing out that um, like this was a seven ish month project that ended with a rocket launch, but the rest of it was photographing people. And I don't photograph people. And um, that was definitely a a learning curve for me. Like so much of this project was photographing people. Um, And it's hard because like a rocket doesn't blink or make a funny face when they're talking. Um, And there's, there were, there were like occasions where I'm like, man, this photo is really good compositionally, but I know that one of them probably wouldn't like the way their face is positioned when they're talking. And it's not because they have silly faces. It's just, you know how, when you talk, you make weird faces the right way. Yeah. You make weird faces. Um, and, and it was definitely a learning curve of like, there's, you know, I take, uh, call it 750 shots in a day, tailor it down to the best, I don't know, 25. Um, then it goes to, well, what does the crew like? And then it goes to, what do we want to release? Because, you know, for, you don't really need to release 20 photos from like a single day, relatively minor training event. So there's like a flow of culling down everything. And then there's times where if you're at a facility like a SpaceX event um, or something else where they have to approve the photos, you could have a shot that SpaceX or someone is fine with, but the crew doesn't like how they look or vice versa, where, you know, the crew loves this, but maybe we're at a, and not even just SpaceX particular, but we're at a facility and they didn't approve that photo. Yeah. Um, so like there, there was a lot of learning curve, like so much of my work to date has been pretty independent you know, working with some media entities, but like rarely are those media entities going to be like, no, you can't use this photo. So it was definitely a learning experience there, but it was all like um, really productive and healthy and like um, <clears throat> great for me to learn like like what processes go into like a real project versus just me photographing rockets like as a, as a hobby that's profitable. Yeah, you know, this yeah, was yeah. the first, this was maybe like the first or second big thing that felt like it was more of a, a job than like a profitable hobby. And that doesn't mean I didn't love it. Like I loved it, but it was, it was like a job, not a, like, I'm going to shoot some rockets for fun and make some cash. Yeah. On that side of things, you know, like the, obviously this was a huge opportunity to join such a big campaign. Did you, what were your considerations in terms of like the things that you would miss out on work-wise during that couple of months period? Um, Was that a major impactor or did you feel like, you know, a couple, couple launches here and there is not a big deal? It was a reservation because I didn't know what I might miss, but I ultimately realized like you can't pass this up in lieu of like, oh, well, like I'm going to be bummed if I miss three Starlink launches. Like that just doesn't yeah. matter. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I figured like the I learned pretty quickly the team was nice enough that if there was something I was really, really insistent on not missing and I only had to miss a minor thing for Inspiration4, I think they would have adhered to that. But I actually didn't. I don't think I turned down any opportunity to travel and photograph the team in lieu of like going to a GPS launch or something. Um, there, so around the time of the campaign beginning, it looked like Astra was going to launch a bit sooner than they ended up launching in like August. But I think maybe to do with them going public, they pushed that launch a bit and kind of like swapped that timeline. So I was a little worried about like missing out Astra launches because I had worked so much with them last year, but. Um, yeah, now that I think about it, I would say like I, I did miss two Astro flights, but I, I had a, my colleague Brady Keniston fill in for me for those. He did a great job. The team was happy with him. So I would say it was totally worth the trade-offs. 
So you would awesome. you would trade flying in a fighter jet over pad 39A for astro flights is what you're willing to say? Uh, <laughs> is that you said fair... it, not me, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, that were, was really fun. What would you say? So you did a couple of fighter jet sessions. You did a zero G flight. If you had to pick one of those to do again, what are you doing? So I've done eight fighter sorties and um, two zero G flights. I would say from a an experience perspective, I'd pick the the zero G because you know you could like maybe sit in a fighter jet simulator and get the experience of physically feeling like you're in a in a in an ejection seat and having the uh, avionics and stuff in front of you, but you can't really simulate zero G without doing a zero G flight or something, and um, I miss zero G, man. I've only had like 14 minutes of cumulative zero G or something like that, <laughs> but it is so much fun. It is such a freeing experience to be able to move like however you want and and learning what it's like to move in zero G. Um, yeah, man, I miss zero G. <laughs> I, I got to do another one of those flights. I wish they were a bit more affordable. Like, um, yeah, yeah. We are working like, on the off nom like vom com. So once we once we book the off nom vom com, you can you can come oh, on yeah. and be the official photographer. We sh for sure. We should do it in like a Cessna 150 and have like two of us um, <laughs> experiencing zero G. Um, I think we I think we yeah, have I mean, uh, somebody out there. Thunder Screech, I believe, has some pics of of doing that themselves and having coffee everywhere in the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So if you're in the if you're in the off nom um, Discord, I think you've seen some pics. <laughs> The, that's not to understate the fighter jet flights though. Those are really fun and the bubble canopy, like you feel like you're just in the air being flown by a thing or like you are flying versus like when you're in an aircraft commercial airliner, you're looking out this window and it's like, you're just, you're in a thing, looking out a little, not circle. are the thing. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're in a fighter jet, even in the backseat, like you are the thing and, and you can see clouds everywhere versus just looking at clouds through a little window and flying around clouds to avoid them, like big, thick rain clouds, like it's really fun and pretty surreal. Um, and and the photography, the air to air photography is actually really challenging. Um, you have to deal with like reflections from the canopy and safely aligning with the formation and stuff like that. We had a we had an instance when we were doing the 39A flight where the photo plane, uh, ship seven, was catching up with the six ship of, it was, four L-39s and two Alpha Jets. And we were a little behind them before this photo pass. And we tried to, I guess, cut the corner um, on meeting up with them. And number four in the formation was like, knock it off, knock it off, because it looked like we were getting a little too close. And I don't think we were in a dangerous position at all, but like that's a scenario where you want to be super overly cautious, which is totally understandable. And we had to do this maneuver to like, uh, which way did we? I think we pulled like back into the right and we ended up pulling, I think six and a half Gs. And that's manageable if you like take a deep breath and you prepare and the pilot goes, here come the G's and then you slowly pull back. <laughs> but when you're holding when you're holding a camera and like you're listening to the comms loop, but you're not like really focused on the comms loop because you're just trying to shoot. And then all of a sudden you're like, you hear knock it off, knock it off. And then you're getting like pulled back and the camera is like 35 pounds. Um, it's definitely <laughs> a lot harder than when you just pull back on the stick, like breathing <laughs> fine and all that. Um, but it's a really fun challenge and like it's it's an opportunity that, that not many people get so i um i really took advantage of like talking to the pilots and learning about you know how can we make these photos better so like if you pull up the flicker you can see there's two sets of photos over 39a um go back a little farther and you'll see the photos from the first flight now those photos the rocket is not yet vertical and this was our practice flight so these photos were so important to the team and we also wanted to fly jets multiple times that uh, we did two flights and it it's hard to kind of say it tangibly but the photos from the second flyover are demonstrably better than the ones from the first both from like a lighting perspective because the weather was awful on the first day but also <laughs> because i had a maybe a 20 minute debrief with one of our most experienced pilots Leif. And he taught me about what do I need to tell my photo ship pilot to get us in better position for the photos on the real time, on the real day. And it was just, we had to get a little closer and, and position ourselves a little better. But I think like just looking at them, the positioning of the planes relative to the launch pad is better. Like the planes look a little bigger. We had better mm -hmm. angles for like the six ship. 
where you can actually see more of a triangle versus like a side on profile. Um, and I, I'm pretty proud of that one in particular. Like, I think I, I think I did a pretty solid job of, That's of a rad executing photo. on that photo mission. <laughs> yeah. That's so there's, job. there's like the same frame, but a little cropped in if you go one ahead or one behind, I think. Yeah. So that is Jared right above the dragon in the front seat, <laughs> which I think is really cool. Because like him and his helmet are like relatively proportionately sized to Dragon, which is a total coincidence, but I think it's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I yeah think, the, those I flights are I, really fun. I think I would. Uh, this, maybe this is like a sacrilegious space thing to say, but I think I would take a fighter jet flight over a zero G flight first if I had to choice. I think just I don't know the fighter I mean, jets. It's nice and visceral. It's like it's I don't know. It's raw. It, it's. <laughs> How about you different. just come here and we'll do the centrifuge together? A couple, right, right. couple hundred bucks. Then we'll do no, this. No, but I want, I want some like afterburners and I want. Yeah. You want the noise. I want to I feel the, the machine <laughs> under me, you know? Yeah. Well, the, um, the, um, the Zero G pilots will not let you fly the plane, but um, these guys <laughs> let me fly the plane. So uh, I saw him like tag me in a. In an Instagram story, I don't know if he's still listening, but um, Slick Bomb, he's a, also a former Thunderbird. He has been my photo pilot for a lot of these flights, and he let me fly the L39 um, a couple times, and I did like a barrel roll uh, over Montana at sunset, which was really cool. I don't know if I've told this story uh, publicly, but the first time I tried to do the roll, I did not do it with enough urgency. And, you know, I don't know if people know this, but you generate lift with your wings. And when your wings are not like level, you're not generating lift the right way. So I, I tried to do this roll and we lost lift. And like all of a sudden the canopy like just became grass and mountain. And he had to like pull us out of that. So that was a high G maneuver that I wasn't really expecting. Um, and nor I would was, say I definitely like, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, like I should not underscore, like he totally knows what he's doing. And, and when he's letting a novice I'm not even a pilot. I'm just a guy. When he's letting a guy uh, control the aircraft, like he's going to be totally ready to take over. And he did at a totally appropriate time, like hand over the stick himself. But um, then he's like, yeah, you just got to do it with a little more urgency and also pull back a tiny bit. So you're generating like a little bit more nose up as you do the roll. And then the first one, I would say I could have done it like 50% faster, but I otherwise nailed it like perfect roll. Um, and that was really cool. And then our other, our other, one of our other pilots, uh, Philip, he let me fly the L-39 over the shuttle landing facility at like 200 feet, which was really cool. Wow. Um, so yeah, like it was, it was a ton of flying. I'm, I'm sure like the team will get back together and we'll do some more flying in the future. Yeah. So that Gotta was, talk about uh, the fighter jets Starbase. over Starbase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that, um, that trip came together pretty quickly. Like, um, Another thing I haven't really publicized because, like, I lack the medium to kind of just ramble about this. So thank you for that. Um, so this was a, like, weekend trip where I flew to Bozeman, Montana on, like, a Thursday. And then the following morning, I flew with Kid and Leif in Alpha Jets to New Mexico. So we, like, had to ferry these Alpha Jets cross-country to New Mexico. And we had a... Um, <clears throat> memorial for a pilot friend of the team named uh, Snort, who passed away in late July, I believe, in a, in a plane crash. Hmm. And we we had a giant celebration of life for Snort. And I never met Snort, but like I was super touched by the way that all his friends and family talked about him. Like He's just the kind of guy that you wish you could have known. Um, so we had that celebration of life. We woke up early the next morning, and then we flew, I think two L-39s and two Alpha Jets to Texas and then again farther into Texas to Starbase. And we did a photo flight over Starbase, which was so cool to see that area from the air. And um, yeah, I mean, that was just cool. I would say like the, the experience was better than the outcome of the photos this flight. <laughs> um, it was like kind of last minute and <laughs> yeah, like... Um, I could have done a lot better on executing on my end with like communicating with our pilots what we needed, but we still know, got man. some cool this, photos. This total Star Wars photo is like just yeah, yeah. Awesome. I like that one. The team loved that one. Um, do, you, do you have to? Is that a that was, the plane upside down to get that shot? What's going on? <laughs> Top there? Gun. We were inverted. Um, 
Yeah, I was inverted, or like almost inverted, at least. The the thing that's hard about that is like it's really hard to sustain like straight yeah. inverted flight. You can't just like go inverted and then like it just works. So you have to time it really well, which I didn't really realize, which is really hard. Um, and then like obviously, you know, SpaceX like can't say too much, but like we hung out in Starbase for the night and and got to see a lot of cool things and meet <laughs> cool people and. Like the restaurant there is amazing. Like I had one of the probably like top five meals of my life there. Like they had this amazing like <laughs> giant steak platter and all these vegetables and potatoes and stuff. And uh, we act we did stay the night in Starbase and then left super early the next morning. And then we flew to Orlando and we got to see the an early screening of the first two episodes of the Netflix documentary, which was really cool. Oh, nice. um, you know, like you live all this for many months and it is kind of a blur and like you you don't really know the scale of it all because it's so in the moment and then to see it translated onto a big screen like that was really surreal and it kind of like encapsulated all of it into like a digestible hour or like a 45 minute 45 minute episode two episodes um so that was the first moment i mean there were a lot of little moments but that moment was like whoa this is real and like freaking time and netflix made a legitimate documentary series about this thing that I've also got to witness. Um, so that was really cool. And then I think, um, I don't remember what we did. I think that was it for that weekend, but like that trip is kind of a microcosm of what it meant to be a part of this whole campaign where it was like the Sunday before that Thursday, it was like, yeah, we might do some like flights this weekend and stuff. Like you can come out if you want, but like, you know, we'll see. And then Tuesday it's like, yeah, you should probably book a flight to Montana uh for thursday and then wednesday it's like yeah come to montana meet us there like we'll go to the hotel pick up the jets in the morning and like flesh out a plan um so it was cool to like have the ability because like this was my kind of full-time thing from a like financial standpoint like to have that flexibility to be on permanent standby to do these cool trips yeah and get yeah, to take yeah. amazing photos and it's my job like that was really nice and and it was a refreshing change versus like the freelance grind of launches. Um, I, w I would say like I was cautiously approaching almost a burnout moment before I got this opportunity and it couldn't have come at a better time. And now that it's over and we've had like three night launches in the last seven days, I'm kind of like also a little burnout and could use a little <laughs> break. Um, so. Do you foresee it, uh, more kinds of experience. these engagements in your future where like, like was this thing energizing in that way or do you think this is fun every once in a while is it something that you hope to do more of uh i would do this in a heartbeat again like it was it was the highlight of my life thus far and like the honor of my life being involved with this campaign um more so like not even the photography like i was super fortunate to earn the trust of the team and spacex and everybody to get some great access but um you know when, when you get a great photo of a falcon 9 and like there's some commercial satellite on it and you're not a SpaceXer and you're not really affiliated with the program in any way. It's kind of just this like cool little, like, oh, cool, I got a cool picture of a rocket, like, got some retweets, maybe Elon liked it. It doesn't really like, at least to me, I'm, I'm sure it's kind of diluted after I've done it a lot of times, but like, it doesn't really represent or mean a lot. But when I'm like at the end of a 12 hour training day with the crew, photographing them, and then like sitting down with one or two of the crew members and reviewing the photos I got, and they're like smiling because this is now a lifelong capture of this fun day they had yeah, like that yeah. that's a totally different feeling of satisfaction for me and i basically lived that for like six months straight and um i remember a couple moments like once the crew came home because they don't have uplink capability to dragon so like they can't send them pictures or video but the ground can see video of them so they couldn't like send them my launch photos as if that was like the first thing on their mind uh, <laughs> But they, they couldn't see like any of the things I captured. So like the night they came back, like I was hanging out with all the crew and like showed some of them my pictures and stuff. And they're like, whoa, like our launch looked like that. What? Like we didn't we didn't know it did the whole jellyfish thing. And they were like blown away. And that's like way more of a satisfaction and fulfillment thing than like getting a picture of a rocket that I'm not really contributing to or anything. Um, so I would definitely do any sort of project like this again. Um, and I'm sure like there's only going to be cooler opportunities as, uh, as I move forward and as the industry opens up. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, well, I mean, I, I think just congratulations. Like that just sounds like a really cool experience. And, um, I'm delighted that, that, 
you know, because like you're you're you were already a part of the space community, and it's like it's really nice, even just from us watching from the sidelines to see one of our own like get swept up into it. And so I don't, I I felt. A I mean, lot that of was joy. both both you and Cyan, right? That what was like, yeah, oh, yeah like yeah, yeah the people too, that we yeah. like tweet with all day, basically. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I I lived vicariously through your your experience a little bit. So thank you for that. I think. Thank uh, you. You know. Thank you, and it's it's great. They like. They not only trusted me to do the job, but they trusted me to share the story from like my own perspective. It wasn't just like me offloading photos to like a, a team and like I couldn't say they were mine or anything. Like they were really cool in letting me talk about it, um, like where appropriate and stuff. And and that was a big a big way I was able to tell the story in kind of my own way beyond merely just like dumping photos to a client. And I think that worked really well. And I think like as we have more like creators do these jobs versus like just photographers. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I was well, going but, the yeah, machine like, route, but like, like it just like, like it was, it was you poke cool. a button and like photos come out is how yeah. a lot of people look at it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was, it was cool to like be a storyteller. Um, and as I, I took on more and more work on the uh, media side of things, like helping write the tweets and stuff. And like now I, I run the social channels exclusively. So anytime you see, I for retweet something at an obscene hour. It's it's me. Um, <laughs> so it was great to it was great to earn the team's trust in that way beyond just the photos. Um, um, but yeah, like also like I, I met some incredible people out of it, and and I really did. You know, even after the nice call with Jared at the beginning, I thought it would be like, oh hey, nice to meet you. Take some pictures. See you soon. You know, maybe if I was lucky, I would like six months in have like a text thread with the crew and then like right away we're like hanging out on the first day we met each other and like they're asking me about my story and i'm talking with them and we have a text thread like a day later where i'm like sending photos for them to thumbs up or thumbs down and all this stuff like they just really embraced me being on the team which was an element that i totally didn't expect going in i thought it would be way more hands-off just because i didn't really know what to expect it's cool how much oh, I got did a you sign out of it <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Like perfect, uh, that like sums up how I feel about being on the team is the fact that like three people or four people got call signs. It was me and the three crew that didn't have one. Jared already had his years ago. But like that's really cool that they gave me a call sign because I was like so embedded with the team. Um, and I think like, you know, you're not really supposed to toot your horn about your own call sign, but I don't think you could find a better one than I got, which is Snap. Like I just, I don't think there's a better one out there. There, there is one. And luckily, I think no one watching or no one that will listen to this knows what the other one might have been. But I, I can say pretty confidently that if it was this other one, I would never refer to myself as that. I would never acknowledge <laughs> people call me that because it's it, it's not like it's not crass. I just think like they took a minor thing way out of proportion, which is kind of what call signs are. Like if you do something dumb, like that's going to be your call sign in some way. Um, but I'm I'm glad I got snap. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll save that one for uh, over a drink uh, at Kennedy Space. Yeah, totally. After Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Halfway That's around good. Epcot when we do the yeah uh, halfway when Ep we start at Mexico. We do yeah. the world tour. Yeah, at <laughs> Artemis One. I uh, yeah, totally. we did an Epcot run around the world in July, like with the whole team. That was really right. fun. We were all like double. Which way did you go? Which way did you start? Oh, uh, we started. Is it like are Mexico and Canada kind of like near each other? Those are the two options. Like, Which way did you start? Just, Okay, so we actually we started at Canada, but then we went the Mexico way. <laughs> oh, you oh, <we> did both! <laughs> wow! Yeah, wow! Well, yeah, cause, no, because like so Canada you just were like, like the, right the, right. the Jake Robbins method, right there. Started <laughs> Canada, then go yeah. Mexico way. <laughs> yeah, but like there's this there's this amazing like frozen Coke whiskey thing in Mexico. No, in Canada, that was really good, and I maybe had like a couple of those anyway. Uh, and then we uh, <laughs> they were we not bright blue. Had some, but... No, no, they, but they were really good, and then you know, margaritas and tacos in Mexico. And I think, I don't even remember what was after that point. Cause I'm like, I'm so full. I'm just going to walk and like have fun. And like, I'm not a huge beer guy. And it seems like everything after that was beer. That's true. Um, yeah. The middle is pretty beer. And I think I, I think I had maybe like a fourth of eight beers or something, <laughs> which I think if my math checks out, amounts to two beers. Um, but it was really funny. So like that night we would, we had a huge party and, uh, we would like get to the front of the line and i remember like jared got to the front of the the mexico line 
And he's like, yeah, I'll have 14 of the whatever tacos. I'll have 12 of the whatever. And I'll have uh, 11 margaritas. <laughs> and, and the cashier's face every time was just like, okay. All right. And like they couldn't believe that we were actually ordering all this stuff. <laughs> that's a glimpse right, of our yeah. future right there yeah, this, we'll have to, we'll have to do exactly one better like than that the off, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. the off num, uh, Epcot we're just waiting on that official future. Artemis 1 slot to start booking that's that that's what's happening <laughs> <Yeah>. absolutely <laughs> um, they fix engine 4 <laughs> oh god right. oh man I'm, I'm not going it. there that's a different episode <laughs> I, I, I will say like um, I was pretty like clown heavy on SLS for a while like I think I think there's some very obvious flaws to that program, and I think it gets a lot of well-deserved criticism. But at the same time, it's it's we're close enough to it now that like I'm excited because it's a moon rocket, and moon rockets are really cool. I'm going to cover it fairly for what it is when it's here. Um, so I'm excited for it actually. Like it's going to be a show one way or another, um, and I'm going to be Dude, there to photograph nope. it. Barring like you're not going to want to miss those solids, man. That's going to no. be that's going to be like no way. In We're all gonna love it. Day. Everyone yeah, acts like, yeah, nothing. like, yeah. Th there's gonna be no Twitter drama that day. Like, it's just gonna be everyone pumped to watch this. Well, it, if it works. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I know. I'm, yeah, I'm banking right. on. There's a lot of potential. If I'm it banking on all it. over on the way there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really if it doesn't go yeah. crumply like your dream, your vision. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, oh, I grew up watching shuttle. So, but I didn't get to photograph shuttle because it retired in 2011, and I started photography in 2015. Um, so this will be kind of cool to like see kind of what a shuttle launch may have been like with with the solids. It's and, one better. It's RS one. It's one engine better. <laughs> yeah, twenty five percent yeah. better. Yeah. Um, on that, on photographing rockets, let's talk a little bit about this because I I'm curious about your timeline in particular for one fact. I feel like uh, underexposed rocket launch photography is a thing that happened. I don't know who started doing it. But it wasn't that popular before, and it's very popular now. And I'm curious uh, if you can enlighten us as to the origins of who was like, you know what? What if we got all of the detail of the engine blooms? Like, when did that start? So I don't know exactly when it started, but there was someone, um, he shoots fewer launches now, but he was shooting them a lot more when I was starting. His name's Jared Hayworth. Um, he started doing that a lot, and um, <coughs> I saw some, like, massive photographers doing it, and just like other photographers... Sorry, I'm... He's dying I'm on his blue down. liquid. <laughs> he needs more of the blue juice. <laughs> it's because it's, it's gone. Um, oh, I have some water here. Great. He's looking for the blue juice. <laughs> he runs on that. Juice. So um, anyway, there were like a couple of people doing it, and then I started trying it out. And like there were there were some like public domain photos with the settings. I'm like, I'll try these out and kind of fell in love with the idea of like showing what, what the eye can't see, but what is there. So like those flames are there. Our eyes just can't um, see them. Especially at um, night. Which is like it's... a really cool thing. Yeah, I mean, it's so overwhelmingly bright. Um, but it's cool. Like, I, I think it's definitely kind of become a, a cliche shot. Like, you know, everyone wants to jump in and start doing the engines photos right away. And that's fine. Like, it's, it's a really cool part of the launch photography thing, especially when you get the access to go on site and set the remotes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because so many people have been doing it now it makes it it's kind of like democratizing it to where like the knowledge is out there um it's it's demystified and stuff and and generally speaking like anytime that happens those trends with launch photography it just pushes me to find like the next thing to try to innovate on um like the really arc over anything. the lake um yeah with the reflection yeah, yeah. like <laughs> I, i've really tried to get a great reflection shot lately i got a nice one of lucy um it's not perfect but i'm happy with it uh, I'll probably I'll probably try it again at one of these two launches here before the year is out. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm just always trying to find new ideas to to keep the photography fresh and avoid the burnout and just give a unique perspective. Oh these yeah, that's, ones. Uh, these ones that are my favorite ones Starlink. that you do. Hundred percent, my favorite ones. I think that was May fifteenth of this year. Um, you have an Atlas Five one that, that I was trying from... to pull up uh, of that that I really like. I can't remember With the where crowd? it was from. Yeah. From very similar. Do you remember spot. like? Find it. Was it super close? Was it wide? Was it? No, it was about that. About that. Uh, that I just showed. It might be TDRSM on August nineteenth, twenty seventeen, or <laughs> mid August, twenty seventeen. 
if what? if you go back far enough, uh, you know the exact day. Yeah, actually, that's incredible. <laughs> let me try to find it real quick. If if you like, excuse my. I got it. I got um, it. And you are ex- you were one day off. <laughs> really? Was was that the photo you were thinking of? Uh, I believe so. Maybe not. Oh, cool. No, I don't think so. There was one. I don't know. I'll find it. There was more was waves. Kind of more wave action. It was a pretty choppy oh, was day it in the ocean. Rex? Yes, that was it. Might it. have been Osiris Rex. That was it. Yeah. September yeah. twenty. Uh, <laughs> September. No, no. 18, it was sep- twenty eighteen. It was September eighth to September eighth, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. I think. Sorry. Why? I um, gotta know. There was I a time know. where I I genuinely remembered like every launch I've shot and where I shot it and the date and time. But it just got to the point where like there's too many now that I don't yeah. remember most of the recent ones. That's that's like our our podcast. There's now I'm at the point where I'm like, did I what, what did I do for those these ten episodes in the middle of this time? I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, exactly. This, oh, yeah. Was this that is it? Epic. Yeah. yeah, that's just an epic shot. Because it's also the crazy Thank Atlas you. Five, you know, like yeah, is that, that the Westy? Yeah, like, it's the weirdo um, Atlas Five. Four one one. They're doing a. F- they're doing a five one one sometime in the next, I think, couple months or year or something. That'll look wild. That's gonna go real sideways too, because it's gonna be, yeah, a, a very slow lift off. Yeah. Uh, Jake, you you wanted to talk about his poster. It's up in ULA. Speaking of <laughs> yeah, ULA. yeah, this this is one of my favorite stories. So the the ULA thing, you gotta you gotta tell us about that because you got this whole big shot. Mm-hmm. Is it in the headquarters in the lobby? Is that where it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in, in uh, Centennial, Colorado. So I actually, like, the four-year anniversary of me going to visit that was, like, a day or two ago. Um, I'm Is at it the this point shot? Where, like, I don't really... No, so that's WGS-10. This was WGS-9. But I think this uh, photo is, like, one off. categorically better than the one they used. Wait, no, it might have <laughs> been WGS-8. Wait, hold on. I don't know. Anyway, no, it was 9, I think. Um, let's see. Was it 9? Yeah, it was 9. Um I think I've gotten so much better photography uh, since then, but yeah. you know, this was like one of the few images at the time that was kind of of this caliber of exposing for the engines and stuff. So they were into it. It was actually Tori Bruno himself reached out like on behalf of an assistant and inquired about the image. Yeah, there it is. So it's like 20 feet tall, 40 feet wide in their lobby. Um, they just they emailed me. They're like, can we? can we buy this from you? And I'm like, okay. And then I gave them a number and they were like, okay. And then I realized the number was too low because they said, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. It's always how you know, I'm I would, like, damn, they yeah. didn't even negotiate. I, I would say like with where I was at as a photographer, like still not yet a professional kind of just a, a kid making some money on the side. Like I think I priced it fairly, but if I, if I was asked to do that now, especially knowing it's ULA, <laughs> I would I would probably <laughs> charge about five times as more, uh, but like that that doesn't matter. Like it's it's a really cool accomplishment for me, and I'm I'm proud of it. Um, and it's cool knowing like every every now and then it's it's kind of died off with COVID, but uh, every month or so I would get like a tag that they brought in a, a guest group and they took a selfie with my photo and they like knew it was mine and tagged me, which is pretty cool. Like I don't. This is actually like a tangentially relevant story that I haven't told that I think would be really funny. So, um, you know, like like I still live in the town where I grew up and, and parents are nearby. Like, so I'll go out to lunch with my dad, you know, a couple times a week. And we have some friends that we'll meet at this place that we always go to. And and I, I was telling one of them this story. And then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah you you tweeted about that. You, you went and shot the Milky Way this weekend. And I'm like, well, what? I'm like, how do you know that? He's like, dude, you, you tweeted about it. You posted it. I'm like, wait, those are like real numbers when like people like the the thing, like people see this. And I, like, you know, I always get these like little mini reminders of like, it's kind of surreal to think like that audience, like I know there's bots and stuff, but, like the audience is real. And even if people aren't liking or replying, like they still see this. And um, it's cool to know that my work has an impact on people that even if they're not replying to everything like they still see it and they're probably like oh wow this this rocket photo kind of made me smile or this time lapse of the milky way was cool and and made me think about you know our our position in the universe or something but that was like i don't know why it took me six plus years almost seven years of photography to kind of have a moment like that but i was like whoa like i'm telling the story and he like knows what i'm talking about like it was weird (laughs) it was just weird i'm a somebody (laughs) (laughs) I made yeah, it. it's like I, 
I don't, and, and like, I don't really think of myself in that regard. Like, I really think that I'm just a guy that takes pictures and kind of fell into a couple of lucky breaks of like, you know, post getting attention online and some cool articles and, you know, now getting involved with Inspiration4. Um, like, I'll have, like, I'll be up at, at dinner at the port or something or like the Cape and, and someone will come up and be like, are you John? And they're like, nervous and i'm like i'm just a guy like you, <laughs> like yeah you astronaut. found me exactly where you expected to find me like <laughs> yeah like like i've i've had people like at jetty park take my picture with telephoto lenses and like tag me later and i'm like you could have said hi like <laughs> just a, i'm just a guy like i i would rather just come say hi than like tag me in photos six hours later it's kind of funny now you made this weird um, like we could have been friends <laughs> and now it's weird <laughs> yeah yeah and like like um i was out to dinner with um one of the i4 crew members when they came back into town a couple weeks ago and we got recognized by a spacexer and they recognized me and the i4 crew member it was like no, 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 recognize the astronaut. I, I'm not here. Like, don't. <laughs> it was, it was really funny. Um, but anyway, like, that sounds just, like I think your rockets look cool. Like, um, they trusted your rocket. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, like it just ties back into like I'm, I'm really fortunate to be what I'm doing. Um, you know, not many people ever find a, a passion that they can turn into a career, or even a hobby that they're passionate about, like I am with my work and. I'm super fortunate that I can not only do it, but like also get paid to do it full time. Um, so to those who are listening, thanks for uh, following along. Man, he's, cool. And he's a professional broadcaster, just stuck the land in here. Yeah, in minute just, 57. Just... Stuck the land. Yeah, I mean, oh, are we... do we do any, any more of the are show? Are we getting to the we end? Just end it right We're now? towards the end, but you didn't <laughs> no, even talk no. about your calendar. I mean, we this can... is your calendar plug spot can... right here. If you guys want to keep going, I have like total margin to go a little longer. I don't know what you guys are up this to. This is happy hour, baby. Like, we, we don't we're have to we're like on a schedule here, John. This is this is happy I hour. I see. We're we're precise now. I see. Tell yeah, us about the this drinks calendar. Cost more if we run over. So. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, don't want so you drinking too much of the a, blue liquid, whatever that is. No, it's it's gone. Um, so I have a I have a calendar. I've been doing this three years now. Um, it's an eleven by fourteen wall calendar and. You can order it. You cannot order it, and it's cool either way. I don't really. I I actually sell it, baby. I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't like talk about margins with really anything. But like the margins on these are not good, and <laughs> I only sell them because people ask for them. And I don't really. Did I freeze? Oh no! I just, no, you're no, here. There we good. I'm are just good? looking at your calendar. Okay, page. so yeah, everything's fine. Um, I I sell these more so because people want them, and I can do it at a not a loss. And I actually like um, if if people leave like nice like I, I'm gonna jinx it now and people are gonna go do this but like there were some nice comments that people left in the order field of the comments um, and like I I sent them an extra one or I I've like given some away and stuff like that so I try to like with the calendars turn the profits back into like doing something nice for people in the holiday season um, and I've done a couple giveaways with the calendars and stuff like that but um. It's more of a, an item I do because people want more, less so than like a product that I really want to push and, and make a lot off of. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Like one, it's it's nice to do nice things and it feels good to like brighten people's day like that. But also like um, they're a total pain to order and like there's a lot of drama with like the printer and I have to use this really crappy software to order them and it like makes me wait three minutes each time to like upload the project. You can't just like reorder the project you have to make a new project every time and i actually <laughs> i i fell behind when i announced it like i i got a couple hundred orders the first day or two and it took me like three business days of like most of my day being ordering these calendars online to catch up and then at that point i'm like stop ordering these but people keep ordering them um and i'm finally caught up to to getting them out to customers um so i never actually see the calendar some people will leave a comment they're like can you sign it and i'm like no because it goes straight from the lab to the the customer um i i think next year will be the year i finally bite the bullet and, and find a different solution <laughs> <laughs> hire an intern ne next year is the best time to do anything so 100 yeah. percent. yeah exactly yeah and and you know what you someone can clip this i i'm like 90 percent sure i'll just do the same thing next year like it's <laughs> Because <laughs> like I always get I always get too busy and then like I'm making the 
the design like last minute like i i made most of the the template on a flight with the i4 crew to memphis like a month ago so um definitely was catching up there jake what are you up to these days got anything good since last week oh anything good since last week um yeah no i don't think i put, I put out the uh the final we martians episode of the year yesterday got into some crazy genetic stuff with uh dr chris mason it's not my wheelhouse i don't know much about space genes but uh, that's g-e-n-e-s oh, 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 oh. not j-e-a-n-e-s he did, uh, yeah. he did work he did with a twin uh, study yeah the entities that did the medical stuff with inspiration four. Oh really ah. oh interesting i don't okay. think i yeah i don't i don't i think i can say that i think it's known that <laughs> I4 did medical stuff with entities and it's known that he works with those entities. <laughs> I just don't know if the connection had been made. Uh, anyway, I don't think I, I actually news. met him, but like he was he was around at uh, somewhere that I was and it was cool to hear him speak. So, um, yeah, yeah. Cool, dude. I'm going to give that a listen. Thank you for, for mentioning that. No problem, yeah. That's what Jake's here for. Yeah, plug him out. That, was like, that like caught me totally off guard. That was cool. Thank you. A flashback. <laughs> Anthony, what about you? Just quitting my job. Besides quitting your job. Just yeah. working on that. Yeah. <laughs> so some we'll talk more, with that. We're yeah. talking more about it next week. There's there's a lot going on with it, but it's gonna be uh it's gonna be awesome. Next week so. will be fun. We're gonna talk about, yeah, like what 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 our ambitions are for the coming year and some strategy stuff. It'll be, it'll be if you like inside baseball for the off nominal cinematic universe, mm-hmm. this is gonna be then you're uh, gonna it's it's your you're show. Gonna, you're going to eat up this happy hour. <laughs> and then, so yeah, we got that next week. Then we got a week off for Christmas. Do we want to talk about mm-hmm. end of the year happy hour? Well, I mean, any end, end of the year stuff in general is awesome for off nominal. So we got, because yeah. we got the main show. Yes. Like our main, the, the, the normal not happy hour show is coming up. We're going to do the off nominees like we do every year. Our friend Matt Russell from uh, uh, Interplanetary Podcast will be joining us. It, there's some good ones. I So I, have you done your? No, your I have, I'm, that's I on my mine. list for tomorrow. Yeah. I got I got like seven or eight to nominate, and I bet you that you only have two or three of those on your list. So I'm like I'm pretty <laughs> okay, excited awesome. about. It. Yeah, uh, and so we're gonna do that, and then yeah, and then we got a fun one for the end of the year uh, coming up for for happy hour. We're gonna try and do some some predictions, I think. And we um, got the, uh, my biggest fear yeah. in space industry <laughs> for a reason I will explain directly to the man himself. Jeff Faust is going to be on on December 30th. Oh, 30th? Yeah. 30th. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh so that's going to be awesome. Listen to that one. I, I had a dream yeah. once that has left me scared of Jeff Faust <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to tell Jeff Faust the dream that I had about him and his writing uh on that show. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, I mean, we have a big culture. If you're, if you're a patron of either Anthony or I, you are in our Discord, um, and you, uh, you know we have a culture of, of predictions. Um, one of our listeners, sa- the same guy, the Zero-G guy, Thunderspeech mm-hmm. himself, has made this uh, cool little app that interacts with our Discord, and we can log predictions about upcoming space events. This will launch by that time. This won't launch. This will launch before that will launch. Anything you want to predict, you can just put it in a text and, and record it in the record forever. And we have a lot of fun with it. So we're going to do some fun stuff uh, on the show, kind of in that vein, and uh, put ourselves on the record. I we're going to have to put them all into the bot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are going to have to go into yeah. the bot afterwards and type them all in. It's going to be a, a tedious And make a shadow still. Discord account for Faust to put all his predictions <laughs> in as well. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be good. Awesome. John, yeah. thanks again for uh, hanging out with us. Where should people follow you if they aren't for whatever reason and apparently are watching this? Uh, John Cross Photos on Twitter, Instagram really are my main social places right now. And then um, website is johncrossphotos.com. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Nice and easy. That's how we like it. All right, everybody. There was. Thanks for hanging out. Oh, there John's was, got another like, thing. One one question. Someone said, "Did John have some sort of post I four depression?" Yeah, totally. Like it was totally empty feeling afterward. Like all this like <laughs> run and gun travel, and then like it's just over. Then he just gets invited to I shows think... like this. Yeah, now you're trying to fill yeah. that void with <laughs> shitty YouTube shows. Yeah. And then only only one other question that I saw was someone said, "Are you formally trained in photography, or is this just a hobby that caught enough traction to team you up with I four? Uh, no, like it was all like kind of just self taught YouTube videos, learning from others. Um, and I was doing it professionally before I got involved with I4, but 
I didn't like go to college or anything for photography or college at all. I did it straight out of high school. So anyway, I just wanted to answer this because I saw him really. Cool. That's why we love you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for letting me hang out. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for joining us. This was fun. We'll see you in Florida soon Jeez. for the Absolutely. Epcot, we'll Epcot trip. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> for sure. I will. I'll put it on my calendar that I have on my website. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.